Behold. Now that's not something you hear people going around saying very much anymore. Perhaps the only time it really fit was maybe if you were a ringmaster of a circus. <clears throat> you seem silly if you say, Behold! Unless you have something really spectacular to reveal. But linguistically, this word, when you read it in the scriptures, is used in the sense of saying, those who are reading or hearing, pay attention. The thing that comes next is the most important thing. It is the thing that I am drawing your attention to. It is the thing that I wish for you to see. Now, if we were to use that linguistically in modern times, it might only be used to say things like, Behold the bride. That's a big deal on the wedding day, the revelation of the bride-to-be. Or, behold the president, behold the king comes. Right, it's not, as I showed with the children, an introduction for an old shoe or a water bottle, but something that is a big deal. Well, in the text today, God is drawing our attention to something important. In fact, he's drawing us to the most important thing there is. And he does so by marking this off with the word, behold. What comes after, behold, in our gospel reading today is this phrase, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Perhaps the one time in all of history that no matter how much breath and excitement and gusto you get behind that word, it would still be an understatement of what is revealed. And that is a fitting theme for us to meditate on today because we are in the season of Epiphany. And epiphany is one of those words that maybe in the context of church you don't think about very much, but you probably recognize the idea, the light bulb coming on, I had an epiphany, right? The word epiphany means a revelation, a revealing, and of course in the context of the church this revelation is coming from God himself. It's a season of revelations, but today we're looking at the thing that begins all of that the first revelation of God's plan of salvation in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So, dear friends in Christ, today I say to you, behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the Messiah, the Christ, the promised one. He is here. That is the great joy of Epiphany. The revelation that our God is not a God of judgment and wrath, but of grace and mercy revealed through his Son, Jesus, the Lamb of God, our Savior. Now this whole scene in our gospel reading today is set up earlier in the chapter, the famous tongue-twisting passage of in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and everything was made through it, and not, not with anything that was made was made, you know, all that good stuff. It sets this scene up. The Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, is revealed. The light of the world that dispels the darkness is here. The light of the world that dispels your darkness is here. And he has come for you. And it tells us that John the Baptist, who's the one saying the, these things, he's not the light himself. He's not the word become flesh, but he has an important job. He bears witness about the light. That's why he's the one saying, behold. He's drawing the world's attention to its Savior who has come in the flesh. Now, he's been around for a little while. Jesus is no longer three years old. But just now has been revealed what he has came, come here to do, and who he is, in fact, the Son of God. So it's perfectly fitting that today we had a baptism, because the revelation of the Son of God to the public came at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan. The Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove, and John the Baptist even tells us, I myself did not know him, but I was told, that when that occurs, this is he 
who is to come. This is the Messiah, the Christ. So the full revelation of God's majesty and glory, his salvation plan, begins at the waters of baptism. Just as it has today for Fletcher in those same waters of baptism. Now that Jesus has bound himself to us through that, because he didn't need to be baptized, he's perfect and sinless. Yet he endured a baptism of repentance so that he could baptize us, as John tells us, with the Holy Spirit. And through this gracious gift, the wondrous promise of the washing away of sins and the reception of faith by the Holy Spirit are given. In verse 31, John says, I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And you could hear in the, the, it's called the flood prayer in the baptismal liturgy, that it points to all the ways that God has used water throughout the Old Testament to destroy the evil and the wicked and to redeem and cleanse and bring to life his people. That's what he did to each of us in our baptism. That's why many of the people here, when we say the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we make the sign of the cross as a remembrance that that name has been placed upon us. And that because that name is on us, our sins are forgiven. We have been given faith in God through this gift of the Holy Spirit. And that now we have life forever with him. All of that is wrapped up into this word, behold. That is the joy at which John says those words. For the promised one is here. Today we continue and take up the mantle of John the Baptist as witnesses of the Son of God, as witnesses of God's grace and mercy revealed in the enfleshed word in Jesus himself. Just as today we bore witness to him as we bore witness to Fletcher's baptism, we bear witness to Jesus, the salvation brought through the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. So now that he's been here and he's done his thing, and now the church has been established, our lives now hold a purpose, a deep and profound meaning related to this idea of behold. It contains a twofold purpose as a life, as a witness to Christ. The first purpose actually involves the people that are here this morning. I want you to look around. Go ahead, look around. Mark a few faces. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't know them. Did you know that today, part of the reason that you came to church was for those people? And part of the reason they came was for you. Because when we gather here together in worship, when we celebrate the baptisms of our brothers and sisters in Christ, we are witnessing to one another the truth of what is revealed in Jesus. Because life is hard sometimes, isn't it? Life can be difficult. It puts us all through the ringer at one point or another. Maybe it's times of physical pain and suffering that, do, that don't seem to come to an end. Maybe it's time when children are sick and it seems that they're sick all the time and you don't get enough sleep, and your job suffers and your relationships suffer. Maybe it's times when your relationships end or they're damaged or strained, or times when finances seem to be all you think about and talk about and argue about, wondering when and how you're going to take care of yourself and those you're responsible to. The people that you marked when you looked around, you all experienced those things. Even the people that you see in church where you think, man, they've got their lives together. They're dealing with the same stuff. We all get pretty good at hiding it, but it's there. And Jesus sees it all. And at those moments, the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh, man, they're working overtime to attack and get us to doubt in what is revealed in Jesus. And at those times... 
We need the witness of one another. Imagine coming to church on Sunday and being the only one here. Being alone, feeling weak, feeling like nobody else thinks the truth the way that you do. But instead, as you look around, you see that you're not alone. You see that you're gathered with people who have seen Jesus, who by the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit believe in his salvation, his love, and his grace. And they are gathered here to help sustain you through those trials and those difficulties. And how do they do that? They do that by pointing you, like John the Baptist, to Jesus. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away your sin. Behold, the Lamb of God who sees you in the midst of your difficulties, who died on the cross so that you might live, so that whatever situation you're dealing with, you have the victory in him. At times, it can be hard to believe that on your own, but when you can look around and you can see others who have gathered together in the belief in Jesus, the joy of welcoming a new young believer in Christ, it sustains us. That's part of the blessing that God intends the body of Christ, the church, to be. The second purpose for our life of witness is for those who aren't here. For those who, when you turn around and look around, you don't see them. Those are the ones who don't know that the Lamb of God has come into the world, or they don't understand what that means for them, or they don't believe it. Those to whom the epiphany, the revelation of Christ, isn't known. The world is a tough place, as we just went through. And many of you don't need me to tell you that. You've experienced the harshness of our fallen world and the weakness of your own flesh. But the world's a tough place for everyone, not just for Christians. And can you imagine some of the things that you've gone through without Jesus? Can you imagine dealing with those things without the support of your brothers and sisters in Christ? There are many in our world who do. That's the life they live, for they do not know that the Son of God has come into the world to save sinners like you and me. And so we are called by Jesus, the Lamb of God, as his people to bear witness about him to those who do not know him, to those who are not here with us, receiving his gifts and being encouraged by his word and promises. He's called us to let them know their great enemies of sin, death, and the devil are defeated. They no longer have power over them. One of my favorite passages in the scriptures is when Jesus tells his disciples that the world is a harsh place. But then he says, take heart, because I have overcome the world. That is the joy that you and I know, and that our life bears witness to so that those who are not here come to know that glorious and joyous truth as well. So dear friends in Christ, I think we need to spend some time reflecting on what has been revealed to us during this season of Epiphany. What the revelation of God and Jesus means and how our lives should point like John's to Jesus. For the reason that you and I are gathered here today, the reason that baptism is a joy is not me, it's not you or anybody else sitting in the pew, but it is our Lord Jesus who has brought us all together in this place. He is the source of our joy. He is the source of the meaning of our lives and the hope we have in the future. So I encourage you to ask yourself, how can my life be like one that says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away your sin. That is my job today. That is my calling to point you to Jesus. So again I say to you, behold, the Lamb of God, he has come into the world. He loves you. He loves you so much, even in your sin, that he took it upon himself on the cross, died the death that you and I deserve, so that we can live forever. 
And behold, he has given you his perfect righteousness and his abundant life. Behold, like Fletcher today, he has called you his own. So your brothers and sisters in Christ, be a witness of his glory, both to those you see around you today, encourage one another in the faith, but also to those who aren't here, so that they too may come to know the joy of the revelation of God that we celebrate today. That indeed the word has been made flesh, the Lamb of God is here, and he has taken away all your sin. The joy of God's love is yours in Christ Jesus. In his name. Amen.